history. That's how historians describe the relationship between John Paul II and Ronald Reagan. I recently spoke to the author of a new book who reveals new details about the spiritual connection between the Catholic Pope and the Protestant president. Joining us now is author and professor Paul Kanger. Thank you so much for coming by. Thank you, Lauren. Thanks so much. Tell us what you learned about the meeting in 1982 between President Reagan and Pope John Paul II that helped just set the course to defeating communism. Yes, yeah, so that was June 1982, so it was 35 years ago. And, I mean, Reagan had wanted to meet John Paul II since he saw him go to Poland in June 1979 when Reagan was watching it on television back in, back in his home in California. But so they finally got together June 1982. At that point, it was about a year after they were both shot. So everybody remembers that they were shot, right? But no, no, they were shot March 30th, 1981 and May 13th, 1981, six weeks apart. So, so they got together and, and they said that they believe, they met for about an hour at Vatican Library one-on-one, -on -one, and they shared their mutual conviction and sense that God had spared their lives for a special purpose, which they believed was to work together to defeat atheistic Soviet communism. You reveal new details about how uh, Reagan was interested in the secrets of Fatima and the connections to JP2's shooting. Yeah, that's, that blew me away. I mean, I had no idea. I had written a book called God and Ronald Reagan back in 2004 before I converted <laughs> to the Catholic Church, and I didn't know any of that. I didn't know any of it at all. Uh, Reagan knew about Fatima. He received a one-on-one -on -one briefing on Fatima from Frank Shakespeare, the second ambassador to the Vatican, before he met with John Paul II in June 1987 in Rome. So that was five years in Rome after the first meeting together. And then this really shocked me, and this is embarrassing as a Reagan scholar. I didn't know this. Reagan actually gave a speech in Portugal in May 1985 where he mentioned the shooting of John Paul II, and this is in front of the whole Portuguese parliament, prime minister, and everyone. He mentioned the shooting of John Paul II, Mary, Fatima, the shrine in Fatima, the three shepherd children, and even said that in the power of the, in the, in the, power of the prayers of the children of Fatima lies more power than in all the great armies and statesmen of the world. And this is a I Protestant. Mean, Reagan said that. <laughs> this yeah, is a Protestant, yeah, not a yeah, Catholic. Exactly, exactly. I mean, it's an amazing statement that you would hear maybe even a Catholic make, but let alone a Protestant president. So I was, I was shocked when I saw that. What did you learn from the relationship between the two leaders? What, going forward, what is needed um, to make a difference in the world between religion and state? Well, it's a good question, and I don't know that we'll have this kind of commonality of purpose again, or at least in a while. I mean, we just saw Pope Francis and Donald Trump, and I mean, they had some things they agreed on. They had some they things had the that they disagreed issue, on. Right? That's right. That's exactly right. They both would probably agree that radical Islam is a global threat in some form, right, persecuting Christians. But their worldview and how they would respond to that, could they come together with like a common plan I don't know. I don't see it happening in the way that Reagan and John Paul II did. And then add, add this, Lauren. So imagine like Francis and Trump coming together a year after both being shot and almost bleeding to death and then having this divine sense that they were saved for this common purpose. That kind of a bond, I mean, we probably won't see it again in our lifetimes. And that bond changed the world. It changed history. Thank you so much, Paul Kenger, professor and author of A Pope and a president. I would highly, highly recommend the book. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. It. Thanks for coming. Finally, tonight, young.